everybody welcome to my channel thank you so much for stopping by I hope you're doing well if you're new a huge welcome to you if you've been here before thank you so much for coming back well I'm back from my vacation and it was a very short vacation but I feel invigorated I feel refreshed and ready to jump into the exciting world of jewelry making with you I was on the fence for the longest time about getting away but I worked up the courage and I went ahead and did it. I spent a few days on the beach and I absolutely loved it. I love the beach. I'm a beach girl. And if you don't already know, I have a senior cat, a 16 year old cat with kidney disease. So it was a little bit challenging to find somebody to take care of him. But I was very fortunate to find a very nice technician who actually works at the same vet where I take my cat and he was willing to come to my house and give my cat daily IV fluids. Plus I also have a very nice house sitter who's been with me for years and she's helped me out so many times. I'm so grateful to her. She was able to stay at my house and take care of both of my cats. So I'm very, very thankful. But anyway, I really had a wonderful time at the beach and the sunsets were absolutely gorgeous. I was so impressed. There was one evening where the sky looked like it was on fire. It was unbelievable. And the beach was absolutely gorgeous as usual. I really enjoy sunning myself and just sitting and watching the ocean. You know, vacations are more than just a break from routine. It's a chance to reconnect with yourself, recharge your batteries, and gain a new perspective on life. Stepping away from everyday life allows you to unwind, relax, experience a new location, new people. Although I will say we didn't really meet anybody. We just kind of hung out on the beach. But behind the house where we stayed, there's a marsh, and we were able to observe all kinds of birds. It was so nice. But anyway guys, that's enough about me. I want to jump into today's tutorial and I'm very anxious to show you how to make that gorgeous dainty necklace set. Now one of the necklaces isn't exactly dainty but it is minimalist because it has very few beads on the strands and just one pendant. But I guess dainty means different things to different people. If you're used to wearing a lot of beaded jewelry, then wearing something with just one pendant would be considered minimalist or dainty for you. For me, I think dainty means having just a very thin chain and I'm going to be using chain that has lengths that aren't that big. But anyway, we're going to be using the beads that came in GGC's treasure bag, the spring edition. It was released back in April and she has released a bag since then. If you haven't seen the unbagging video, I'll link it down below so you can go check it out. And I'm also going to leave a link to the website in case you're interested in the GGC treasure bag. Just check down below in the description section of this video and you'll see all the information. You'll also see a list of all the materials I'm going to be using today along with timestamps in case you want to skip forward to any portion of the video. And before we start, let me remind you to please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so because it really does help my channel and it helps me to stay motivated to create more videos for you. Also, don't forget that I always model my necklaces at the end of the video, so stick around for that. And I can't wait to show you how to make these necklaces. So let's go ahead, turn the camera around and we'll get started. And here we have the GGC Treasure Bag, the Spring Edition. I believe this bag was released in April sometime. The name of this collection is Spring Palette. As you can see, the bag was packed with all kinds of gorgeous spring themed beads. There were butterflies, flower charms, beautiful spring colors. So anyway, let me pull out the beads we're going to be using and I'll go over the sizes and everything with you. Here are the beads from the bag. I also chose these two beautiful pendants. As you can see, the colors are pink and blue. Now this one here is so pretty, I may just put that on chain and just have it by itself on chain. When I initially made my sketches, I was going to create some beaded components, but then I changed my mind. Let me just show you how beautiful this is. Look how pretty it is. Look at the sparkle. It's absolutely gorgeous. I just think this one needs to be by itself on chain. It's 18 karat gold plated and it measures 16 by 14 by 3.5 millimeters. And it's a beautiful faceted flower and the petals are faceted crystals. And then it has a gorgeous clear crystal in the middle. Let me show you this one. The color of this crystal is blue turquoise and this pendant measures 32 by 8 by 4 millimeters. This one's really pretty as well. There's the back. I really like it. Let me go over the beads. These are called golden foil pink painted glass beads and they measure six millimeters in size. And if you look closely, they do have a little bit of gold foil on them. It's difficult to see, but it is there. These are really pretty. Let me show you this one. These are teardrop shaped beads, as you can see, and they're faceted and they measure six by four millimeters and the color is blue turquoise. I'm gonna be creating some dangles with these. And these are rondelles, faceted rondelles. And these measure four by three millimeters and the color is also blue turquoise. These are really, really cute, I love them. Let me bring out the other materials. We're gonna be using some craft wire and this is by Beadalon, it's 24 gauge. And I like using this one because it's a little bit stronger than other ones. It's German style wire and it's medium temper. 
and we need 24 gauge because we're going to be working with small beads. I'm also going to be using some chain as you can see and this is cable chain and the lengths measure two by three millimeters and here are some more items. I have three lobster clasps and some jump rings. I believe the jump rings are five millimeters in size and I also have some ball head pins and I'm going to use those to create some dangles. The gauge is pretty thin and that's going to allow me to do wrap loops. But like I said, I'm going to leave a list of all the materials down below in the description section of this video. So now that we've gone over the materials, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start by building the strands of the lower necklace, which is the longest one out of the three. And these are the beads I'm going to be using. I also have a piece of wire and it's a very long piece of wire because I'm going to be using a method that helps you save wire. So you're not going to be wasting too much. Now when I'm working by myself, I usually work directly from the spool, but there's a specific way to do that, and I don't want to go into it today. I did demonstrate it in one of my previous videos. It's a little bit more involved because you have to thread the bead on before you do your first wrap loop. But anyway, today I'm going to show you how to do it with this long piece of wire. Now if you're a beginner, you might want to cut yourself short pieces instead, just to make things easier. In that case, you want pieces that are at least two to two and a half inches long. And the reason you want that much is because we're going to be doing some wrap loops. But anyway, I'm going to show you this method today. And once you've done it like this, you're not going to want to do it any other way. I'm also going to work directly from the spool of chain. And I have it right here on the side. And I'm not going to put it down on my mat because it's too awkward. So I'm just going to unwind a chain like this and place it down like this. But it's still attached to the spool, I haven't cut it. So let me show you how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna create a loop at the end of this wire. So I'm gonna grab it about an inch and a quarter down, kink it, switch to this part of the wire, take the tail, wrap it around the nose of my pliers, flip my pliers around, and continue to wrap to the back. If you'll notice, I created that loop right at the tip of my pliers and that's because I want a very small loop. So you're going to have to decide based on your pliers where you should be and also what size loop you want. So this is what you should have. Now I'm not going to create the wraps just yet. I'm going to open up this loop a little bit. And I'm going to insert the link of the chain into this loop. So I'm sliding the first link right into the loop I just created, just like that. And now using some skinny pliers, I like to use these. These are actually crimping pliers, but I like to use these because they have very skinny tips and they grab really well. I'm going to grab that loop just like that. And with another set of pliers, these are needle nose pliers, I'm going to grab the tail and I'm going to create some wraps. I usually only do about two wraps, but you can do more if you want to. And now we need to cut off the excess. So I'm going to use my flush cutters. If you'll notice, there's a little sharp end that I need to tuck in. So let me grab this loop again to make it easier. And now using my pliers, I'm going to go ahead and squash that little end in. You don't want anything sharp sticking out. And now I'm going to thread on some beads. Just like that. Once again, I'm going to grab the wire with my round nose pliers, line up the bottom loop just like that, kink the wire, switch to this part of the wire, and once again you want to make sure you're at the exact same spot to create that loop. So now I'm going to grab the wire and wrap it around the nose of my pliers, flip my pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. I'm going to snip off the wire I don't need, and I'm not going to close this loop with wraps just yet, because I'm going to attach some chain. So now I need to decide how long I want the piece of chain or the chain segment. And I'm thinking somewhere in the vicinity of three quarters of an inch. For this type of work, it's a good idea to count your links to make sure your chain segments are all the same. But let me see what three quarters of an inch looks like. I think I need to cut here somewhere. So let me take a look at these links and figure out where I need to cut. I think I want my chain segment to have 11 links. And I know that's an odd number, but I'll explain why. 
if you'll take a look at the links, some links are parallel to my mat and some are vertical. That's the nature of cable chain. So I need to decide whether I want to connect my beta components to the ones that are vertical or the ones that are horizontal or parallel to my mat. That's an important little detail. So I think what I'm going to do is to have my links at the end be vertical. So in other words, each beta component that I'm going to be creating will be attached to a link that's perpendicular to my mat. I hope that makes sense and I hope it doesn't confuse you. But that's a very important detail because you don't want to connect one beta component to a link that's horizontal and then the next one down to a link that's vertical. You could do it like that. And I guess this chain is small enough that you won't notice any difference. But that's something that I've been paying attention to lately and I've gotten a little bit picky about it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the 12th link from the loop that I just created which means I'll have a chain segment that has 11 links. I'm going to cut this one right here. So now I'm going to go ahead and attach this chain to that loop. Let me open it up a little bit. I'm sliding the link right into the loop that I created, just like that. And now I'm going to grab that loop with my skinny pliers. And I'm going to grab the tail and do my wraps. And now I'm going to snip off the excess. Tuck the little end in. And there's my first beta component. And by the way, guys, you can have as many crystals as you want. Initially, I had thought about doing three, and then I changed my mind. And don't ask me why. I think having three crystals would be nice as well. So now my next beta component will have one of these pink beads. And we're going to use the wire. So once again, I'm going to grab the wire an inch and a quarter down, kink it, switch to this part, take the tail, wrap it around the nose of my pliers, flip my pliers around, continue to wrap that tail to the back. Let me open it up a little bit. I'm going to slide the link into the loop that I just created. Just like that. Grab the loop with my skinny pliers. Grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck in the little end. Thread on a bead, grab the wire right where the bead is, line up the bottom loop, kink it, switch to this part, take the tail, wrap it around the nose of the pliers, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. And once again, I'm going to leave that loop open. I'm not going to do the wraps just yet, but I am going to cut off the excess. So the next step would be to attach another segment of chain right there. And that's how I'm going to create both strands. I'm going to create one strand for one side of the necklace first, and then I'll create the other side. Of course, I have to figure out how long I want the necklace, and I'll do that as I go along. So to save time, I'm going to go ahead and do it off camera, and I'll be right back. As you can see, I completed both strands, and each one measures about 10 and 3 quarter inches. So by the time I add the jump rings and a clasp, the necklace will be about 22 inches long. And as you can see, I have chain where the clasp is going to go. And I also have chain where the pendant's going to go. So I started and ended with chain. But you can certainly start and end with a beta component. It's up to you. So now we just need to attach the clasp and the pendant. I have two 4mm jump rings for the pendant. And here it is. Let's go ahead and attach it. I'm going to open up this jump ring. It's a very tiny jump ring. Let me 
you go ahead and attach it to the chain. I'm going to slide the link into the jump ring and now I'm going to touch the pendant. And let me close up the jump ring. Let me go ahead and open up this one now. I'll attach it to the pendant as well. And now the chain. It's a little tricky because these links are small. But there it is. Let me close it up. So there it is, we've attached the pendant. And now we just have to attach the clasp. I have my clasp and two five millimeter jump rings. Let me open up a jump ring. Now this necklace does have a front and a back, so we have to make sure that we attach the clasp on the proper side. If you're right-handed, you'd want to attach it on the right side. So let me see. This would be the right side. Let me attach the clasp. And close up my jump ring. Let me open up this one now. And I'll attach it to this end. And close it up. And I don't know if you guys can hear, but I actually have my cat purring on my lap right now. He's been doing a lot of that lately because he's not feeling well, so he's a little bit clingy. It's a challenge to fit the whole thing within the frame of the camera, but there it is. I think it looks really cute, and it's definitely a minimalist necklace on the dainty side. Now I did hang the pretty sparkly flower pendant on chain. So let me go get it and I'll arrange it here with this one. We'll hear both of them and aren't they adorable? I love the layered look, I really do. Now this one here measures about 18 inches, maybe a little bit more with the jump rings and the clasp. And all I did is attach it with a four millimeter jump ring. So I found the center link and I connected it to that. A very simple necklace. So now we're gonna make the third necklace, which is gonna be shorter. Let me get the materials for that. Here are the materials for the third necklace. As you can see, I have a piece of chain and I have my teardrop faceted crystals and I also have some ball head pins. And this necklace is gonna be just as easy as the other ones, definitely easier than the first one. So let me show you how we're gonna do this. The first thing I need to do is figure out where the center of the chain is. So I'm gonna feed my ball head pin through both links. And find the center link which I think is this one. And now I'm gonna grab another ball head pin and thread a bead onto it. Just like that. I'm gonna grab the pin at the top of the bead. I'm gonna kink the pin, switch to this part of the pin, take the tail and wrap it around the nose of my pliers Flip my pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. Let me open up this loop a little bit. And now I'm gonna slide my pin into that link. Just like that. Let me grab the loop. 
wrap the tail and do my wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck in the little shop end. And now I've attached the first angle. Pretty simple. Now let's talk about the orientation of the links. You wanna make sure that you hang all of your dangles on the same side of the links. So for example, you don't wanna hang this dangle on the bottom side of this link, and then the next one on the top side of that link, if that makes any sense. Let me just pick it up and show you. Once again, this is cable chain and the links are perpendicular to each other. So when you lay down the chain, some of the links will be parallel with your mat and the other links would be vertical. So I'm gonna hang all of my dangles on the bottom side of the parallel links, the same side that this dangle is hanging on. And that's something that you really do need to pay attention to. So now I'm just gonna count the parallel links and make sure that I space out my dangles evenly. And I think I'm gonna hang the next one on the 10th link from the one that I have the dangle on. So let me count them. I think it's this one right here. I'm going to place a pin through it so I don't lose it. And now let me go ahead and fix another bead. Once again, I'm going to grab the pin at the top of the bead, kink it, switch to this part, wrap the tail around the nose, Flip the plies around and continue to wrap that tail to the back. Let me open up that loop. And I want to make sure that I hang it on the correct side of the link. Let me just straighten it out so I can see what I'm doing. I definitely don't want to mess this one up. So I'm going to pick it up carefully. And take one more look before I hang it. Remove my pin, and I'm going to slide my dangle in this way. Let me see if it'll go in. There it is. Now, before I close it, I'm going to check it one more time to make sure that it's hanging on the correct side of that link, and it looks like it is. So now I'm going to grab the loop with my skinny pliers, grab the tail and do some wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck in the little sharp end if you see one. And that's basically how you would hang all of them. So I'm going to continue to hang dangles until I think I have the correct amount. And to save time, I'll do it off camera and I'll be right back. As you can see, I hung all the dangles and I really love this little necklace. I love how it looks. Now I did make one little change. I spaced out my dangles a little closer and they're about an inch and a quarter apart in case you're wondering. So there's a total of seven. I didn't put any at the top there, but you certainly could. I just don't think it's necessary, especially if you have long hair. So anyway, I'd like to get the other two and show you the entire set. Let me do that and I'll be right back. Well, here's the entire set. It took me forever to arrange the three necklaces, but I like to arrange them like this to show you what they look like. In a few moments, I'm gonna model them for you so you'll be able to see scale a little bit better. It's difficult to tell how dainty they are when they're on my mat like this. But anyway, I love this layered look. I love the three necklaces together, but I still think my favorite is this one though. I adore that flower pendant. Let me pan the camera up so you can see the top of it. There's the top. Let me come back down again. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me put these necklaces on and I'll see you in a few moments.
Well, look who's here, my friend Boo Boo. He's always hanging out with me. He loves being here. He's been super clingy lately. I think the fact that he's a senior cat and also he has kidney disease makes him extra, extra clingy. And all he wants to do is sit on my lap, which is perfectly fine with me. I love him. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I would love to get your feedback. Let me know what you think of the necklaces. Would you wear one, two, or all three, or a combination? These are so dainty, you could definitely wear all three to any occasion, in my opinion. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I hope I've inspired you. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.